I made a piece called Vices, and it listed all these things like cocaine, ecstasy, <laughs> uh, cigarettes, red wine, luxury vibrators, and a lot of people would ask, wait, did you actually do all those things on the drawing? <laughs> like, no, I did not. <laughs> Maybe a few of the things. <laughs> I'm Amanda Manitok. I'm an artist living and working in Seattle. The work I make is primarily large-scale drawings that pull text from the internet, from my own personal sayings, from a variety of sources, usually coming from a female point of view, so whether it be obscene or provocative or just sweet. Um, I am fascinated with imbuing these pithy little terms or these sayings into these drawings that take hours or sometimes weeks to execute and kind of engraving them in this more monumental way. I grew up in a very Christian home. My father was a minister, and we grew up in a charismatic Pentecostal background, so there was a lot of speaking in tongues, a lot of being slain in the spirit, and, and I spoke in tongues, I think from the age of 13 on. I wanted to be a missionary, and however that got me to the place I am now, I'm not totally sure. Like a lot of artists, I've been drawing since the age I could pick up a pencil or a crayon. But yeah, it wasn't until I would say I was about 30, it was around the time that my mom passed away that it was a real kick in the pants to be like, what am I doing with my life? Um, you know, I really would love to make art and be around artists and to kind of explore what the Seattle art scene had to offer. And that was, I kind of just went all in. One of the first pieces that I ever showed in Seattle was um, a syphilitic vagina <laughs> or a series that were, there were abstractions and they were really beautiful kind of floral visions of what this diseased genitalia looks like. Ripping on the 19th century idea that, you know, syphilis came from the female and that she was always to blame. From there, I've covered a lot of territory, including my T-Shirt Girls series, which once again is culling from the internet and from a lot of um, actual like fashion culture where statements are being made. One of the biggest pieces I've ever made was a 30-foot long drawing in the style of the wallpaper and text pieces that was quoting Frances Farmer. She was such a tragic icon and she dealt with a lot and she dealt with it very articulately and beautifully and I think is overlooked even locally. In making these pieces, I use a standard mechanical pencil and build up layers of marks, probably thousands if not tens of thousands of marks per image. And it's a pain in the wrist, literally, and um, it's really physical and it's exhausting. And I think there's an element of masochism that goes into each piece. So my newest show is going to be with Winston Walker Gallery. It's so these are almost finished. Almost. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's my first solo show with them, and I'm really excited. The show is called Dirty, obviously, in response to some of the language that shows up in my pieces. I don't think I'm trying to be a provocateur with the profanity. I think I just like to cuss. <laughs> I, I find a lot of pure pleasure in using dirty words. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's pulling from like all the sources that I love, from quotes from Francis Farmer to other stars, um, some of my own thoughts, and then some weird shitty things that I found on the, on the internet. <laughs> In the future, I think I will continue to be making these pieces for a while because it really brings me a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy to make them. And there's just endless content that can be interwoven into these pieces. It looks like a lot more time and energy spent and a lot more icy hot on my wrist probably. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm probably just gonna keep making more of the same. Mm -hmm.